Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a very strange and a very peculiar white dwarf traveling across our galaxy. A type of a star that's quite familiar to us, as a matter of fact one of the closest stars known as Sirius B is a white dwarf. But in this particular case, this white dwarf is very strange and also seems to have a very unusual motion across the night skies. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Man. So a white dwarf like the one you see on the screen is essentially the future of our own sun as well. In a few billion years from now, our sun is going to go from this to just the core, which is this. And these white dwarfs are pretty much all over the place. We believe that these are going to be some of the last remaining stars, although technically it's hard to call these stars because they no longer have any nuclear reaction on the inside. A more appropriate term for these objects is a stellar remnant. And one thing we know about these stellar remnants is that some of them, especially those that have partners, have a tendency to sometime go supernova. With some of these objects leaving behind very beautiful supernova, but for the most part always releasing a relatively same amount of energy. With the main reason behind this being their mass. These objects go supernova when they reach a certain total mass equivalent to about 1.44 masses of the sun. And at this point, all of these white dwarfs essentially go supernova creating beautiful explosions and usually producing a relatively similar amount of energy. And because of this, over the decades, the scientists realized we can actually use these objects and these supernova as a kind of a distance candle to measure distances across space. This is exactly how we were able to determine distances to some of the closest and also some of the more distant objects in the universe, including pretty much most of the galaxies. And some of the modern measurements of the expansion of the universe are also based on the assumption that type 1a supernova as they are known from these white dwarfs are pretty much almost always same in brightness. But the new discovery kind of creates a problem for us, because the newly discovered white dwarf seems to have undergone a completely different type of a supernova and may have also survived the supernova leaving behind a very small remnant at the end. So let's talk about what was just discovered. When the scientists were looking around the night skies in our own galaxy, they found one very peculiar star moving in the opposite direction of all of the other stars. So even though most stars move pretty much in the same direction, I guess you can call it counterclockwise, this one was moving clockwise with a speed that's relatively high, close to about 250 kilometers per second, according to the paper you can find in the description below. And also when they looked at the mass of the object and also the composition of this object, they discovered something really peculiar about the composition and the mass of this object. First of all, mass-wise, it was only about 41% of the mass of our sun, which is exceptionally small for a typical white dwarf. With white dwarfs, if they have more mass, they actually become smaller in terms of size, as you see with Sirius B on the left, because the mass itself starts to squeeze the object and essentially gives it more density. However, this particular white dwarf is much larger in size and also much smaller in mass, and though by itself it can be explained in possibly different ways, considering the fact that it also has very different composition makes this an extremely strange object. So for example, for Sirius B here, its atmosphere is mostly made out of hydrogen and helium, with some carbon and oxygen present as well, most of which is actually inside the object in the core. For example, our sun is very likely going to become something very similar in a few billion years from now. But this star doesn't seem to have any hydrogen and helium, and instead has a mixture of neon, oxygen, magnesium and silicon. And that is a very strange combination. It also seems to have some carbon, aluminium and sodium in its atmosphere, all of which are usually the results of the initial stages of a type 1a supernova, which normally produce these um, components and are then spread across the universe. But strangely enough, if this was from a supernova, there is an absence of different types of so-called iron group elements. For example, there doesn't seem to be any iron, nickel, chromium or manganese that are typically produced in these very powerful explosions from type 1a supernova. And right now there is just one explanation to all of this. The explanation being that there was a supernova, but it was very different from what we usually observe. It was most likely 
some sort of a partial supernova that didn't really complete to the end and did not produce most of the materials we usually observe. Most importantly, it most likely produced no nickel, and nickel is normally what produces these very bright flashes that are visible for many weeks after supernova occur. So this suggests that this supernova was most likely almost completely invisible and probably only created a very small flash in the beginning and no other indications afterwards. Which of course kind of creates a problem for us because we always thought that type 1a supernova were for the most part more or less the same, which is why we use them as these distance candles. But this star proves to us that there are still quite a lot of exceptions and now I guess the question is how many of these stars go through these exceptions? If some of them do have partial supernova that only produce some flashes in some light, this actually creates a problem for us when trying to measure various distances in space, including of course trying to measure the expansion of the universe. And as you might have learned from some of the previous videos, right now the scientists are struggling to understand why the expansion of the universe may have actually changed with time. So one of the possible solutions now is that our calculations using these type 1a supernova and the measurements produced by the uh, white dwarf explosions might have been sort of incorrect. We made assumptions that could have been actually wrong, but that's just one of the explanations. There could be a lot of other explanations that will definitely become more clear as we learn more about these unusual objects. But how does any of this explain what we're seeing with this white dwarf? Why is it so much smaller? Why does it have different composition? And most importantly, why is it moving across the galaxy in the opposite direction? Well, the scientists behind this paper believe that the scenario was as follows. Typically, in a binary system with a white dwarf, at some point, if the two objects are close enough, the less dense star, as you see the one here on the right, will eventually start losing its mass and the mass will be accreted around the white dwarf and though in some cases these lead to explosions, in other cases these also lead to the increase in the mass of the actual white dwarf. But in this scenario the scientists think that the second star was also white dwarf that will create a kind of a channel of mass transfer between two objects which for the most part is usually kind of stable but in some cases might be disrupted by certain events. Now, the scientists in this paper think that if, for example, the larger, the more massive white dwarf was about 0.8 masses of the sun and the smaller, although in this case slightly larger in size, white dwarf was about 0.2 masses of the sun, there could have been a chance for a sudden large mass transfer if these two objects were close enough. And if during such transfer this mass suddenly created a nuclear reaction and detonated, it could produce a partial supernova. And the scientists then believe that during such an event, the binary objects would then separate from one another and the more massive object would start moving at a speed of about 280 kilometers per second. So this is one of the potential explanations to how such an object could be born and how it could have the components and the materials present both in its atmosphere and on the inside. But there could be of course other explanations. Although the most important part of this finding is that we now know that partial supernovas seem to be possible and so we have to be a little bit more careful when making assumptions about type 1a supernova being for the most part relatively similar. This also could be a type 1a supernova but it just was much much weaker and never really got to finish what it started. In other words it never really completely destroyed the white dwarf. But in order to understand all of this even better we definitely need to try to discover more of these unusual white dwarfs somewhere out there to try to see how common these are and how often these explosions occur. For now, all we can do is continuously study this object and try to understand it a little bit more and try to see if we can maybe discover its true origin and learn something else from it. Until then though, that's all we know about this unusual object for now and once we learn more I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the Wonderful Person t-shirt. You can also find it in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out, and as always, bye-bye.